Greetings class from the Campania coast. I'm in the region of Campania, Italy, and I'm about 4,203 feet above sea level, which means I must be on top of a mountain, right? Kind of a mountain. It's sort of a mountain. It's a mountain that keeps changing elevation because it's a volcano. I'm on Mount Vesuvius, players. Let's pan around real quick. Here over here is uh, the uh, uh, city of Naples and Napoli, Italy. And if we pan around the coastline here, that's the ancient city of Herculaneum over there. And then we pan all the way around. Keep panning, keep panning, keep panning. Oh, that's the city of Pompeii now that we're coming across. And if you keep following the coastline down to the end of this wonderful peninsula, we're in Sorrento. And the island just off the coast there is a Capri. All of these are very famous, awesome tourist destinations. One of the most visited areas of Italy because it's so beautiful. On the other side of this peninsula is the Amalfi Coast. All of it is small little hill town after hill town with cliffs going right down to the water. It's absolutely gorgeous, but we're here on Mount Vesuvius, a place you've heard of before. So we're going to do a 360 right now. That's the coastline. Follow with me right now as we go along. Oh, you're fine. It's all good. This is the actual <laughs> crater over here. Look at this. We can see the smoke rising. This is the, uh, I think it's called the caldera, the middle of the uh, volcano, this very famous volcano. Steam is still rising up from us. It makes you uh, are very humble as a human to realize that Mother Earth right underneath of us is rumbling, just ready to go, because this volcano is a very active volcano. Let's go back to the coast because it's so beautiful, and we'll talk about the volcano. Because you've heard of Mount Vesuvius, I'm sure if you've read anything about Western civilization, or Greek civilization, or the Roman Empire, you know that Mount Vesuvius is mostly famous because in 79 AD, that sucker blew its top. It was probably higher at this point. So this was actually higher and it blew its top in 79 AD, depicted in many terrible Hollywood films and probably a lot of other international films. And so let me tell you what happened in 79 AD. People actually witnessed this volcano erupting in 79 AD. We can't see it now, it's under a little bit of cloud cover, but that's the city of Naples of one to two million people. People were over there in the bay watching this volcano erupt. And it's a stratovolcano, I think's the word. I'm not a volcanologist nor a geologist, although I'd like to portray either one on TV. So I don't know all the exact terms, but this is the type of volcano that when it blows its top, it blows big time. We're talking fire shooting up, uh, gas shooting up and going down the mountainsides. Lava pyroclastic flows is the actual term. And pyroclastic debris, meaning, hang on, you have stuff like this, this pumice, actual rock and lava and crap being shot into the air up to 20 miles high in the air for a 48 hour period. And so this was the city of Pompeii over here that we already showed, just go back to Pompeii. This is the famous ruins because this city was destroyed of course, but pan back this way on me Katie. Right over here was Herculaneum. Herculaneum didn't catch the, the lava flow and all the rock flow, it caught all ash. So Herculaneum was buried in like 20 or 30 feet of ash on that side of the mountain. Actually, most of the debris flow went this way. So Pompeii, of course, gets leveled completely by uh, 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 toxic gases, by lava flow, by this pumice that's falling down on people. It's something out of Dante's hell. This is an extreme scenario that people actually witnessed from uh, Napoli, from uh, Naples over there across the bay, including a couple of very famous folks or one very famous folks, uh, Pliny the Younger, uh, a, a famous Roman dude who sat on the bay, probably in a wine bar, because that's what I'd be doing, and witnessed this and was writing all this stuff down, saying all oh, the stuff was happening, it was crazy. Uh, somewhere between 15 and 17,000 people died during this volcanic eruption in, a, again, a 48-hour period. And Pliny the Younger was documenting this as his uncle, Pliny the Elder, how do we get away from the younger and the elder? I want to be somebody the elder soon. So uh, Pliny the elder, who must have been a total historical badass, uh, Roman, got in, he was in Naples as well, saw the eruption starting to occur with his, uh, his nephew Pliny the younger, got into a boat and sailed across the water here to help rescue people. This guy was wicked awesome. He died trying to rescue people over here in Pompeii. And, uh, 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 Pliny the Younger was documenting all this as it was happening. So can you imagine this scene? 
and you see how populated this area is now. It was likely smaller, but still very densely populated place even back in the day. That tens of thousands of people, as the eruption started to occur, are trying to evacuate, trying to get on boats, trying to get out of here by land. A significant disaster, most probably the best recorded and best known volcanic disaster in human history. Uh, with the exception of that one in Indonesia uh, that everybody kind of knew about too. So what you have here is a historical site, but what has that got to do with modern day geography? Well, oh look at this, this awesome cloud that's enveloping us right now. Here's the thing that ties it into modern day geography. I said this is a very active volcano, and it is. 79 AD is not the only time Vesuvius erupted. It erupts regularly throughout even just recorded human history. It's called, I think, a 150-year volcano, which means about every century or every 150 years, it blows its top again and has significant earthquake, tectonic, and volcanic activity. And go look it up on Wikipedia. It's happened multiple times in multiple centuries for the last 2,000 years. Uh, the uh, uh, 79 AD one is just the most famous slash infamous one. And that's because, as with uh, all volcanism, there's pattern to this. This isn't random, and even as a kid I always wondered, how come a, a volcano erupts in Italy? I've never heard of any other volcanoes happening in Europe. It seems like a pretty solid, stable place, just like we don't have volcanoes in eastern United States. Why is it that this is an area not really known for volcanic eruptions, except for this exact place? Oh, and actually Mount Etna. So Sicily's right over that way across the water, and Sicily has Mount Etna, a very, another very active a volcano, and Stromboli's around here. And actually there are several active volcanoes within Italy, but right around here, I said we were in Campania. This is a very active geologic and tectonic and volcanic area. It's actually called the Campanian Arc. So Vesuvius and Etna and like three or four other active volcanoes are part of this arc. And so when I was like, what? but yeah, I understand that earthquakes and volcanoes happen in certain parts of the planet, like the Pacific Ring of Fire. So Japan is known for earthquakes, tectonic activity, volcanoes, and tsunamis, which are related to those first two things. And, uh, and that's because the great Pacific plate, if you know about plate tectonics, is pushing into the Asian plate. So Japan sits right astride, two plates that are smashing into each other. One's being pushed under the other. A lot of tectonic activity, a lot of volcanic activity. That same plate's pushing into the Philippine plate. That's why the Philippines have volcanic activity, seismic activity. And that's why Indonesia has volcanic activity, seismic activity, tsunami activity. But what is it about this place? Let's bring it back to the Mediterranean, a Mediterranean. What's happening here in the Campanian Arc and even further east of us? The African plate, if you believe in this theory of plate tectonics, and guess what kids, you should, because it's a theory but it's a fact, the African plate is actually very slowly pushing, uh, moving northward into the Eurasian plate, or the European plate, right? Bullocks. <laughs> it's all bollocks. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> He thinks it's all bullocks. We're going to go forward. Uh, the African plate is pushing also slightly northward into the Eurasian plate, and it's actually being subducted, being pushed under it. And what we are at is actually the absolute western extreme of what we call this kind of vague, ambiguous zone of deformation. You heard it here first. Zone of deformation. That is, it's not an exact plate boundary like the Pacific into the uh, Asian plate that where Japan is, where it's like very regular, we can see it, these plates are smashing into each other. This is a much vaguer plate, because they're not moving that quickly. So as, as Africa is pushing slowly northward into uh, Europe, it causes this vague zone of deformation, which is why you have active volcanism right here in this companion belt, but actually there's a little Aegean plate that constitutes why the a lot of the Greek islands were created of volcanic activity and why there are calderas and old volcanoes there including perhaps the lost city of Atlantis that famous volcano that blew its top there uh, uh, I, a long time ago what's the name of that place Katie always forget in Greece we were going to visit uh, 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 Santorini, which is an old caldera, old volcano. That's because of the Aegean plate in this same vague zone of deformation. It's why you actually have uh, a lot of volcanic, I'm sorry, not volcanic, but seismic activity over in what's now modern day Turkey, because Turkey is on the Anatolian plate. So there's all these smaller little plates 
from here all the way into Turkey that are jostling around against each other and causing seismic activity, which is why you have active volcanism here in this part of the world, here in southern Italy and Sicily, why you have active volcanism and earthquakes in some parts of Greece. And this is a little known fact, I guess, for a lot of Americans, but actually Turkey gets quite a few earthquakes, significant earthquakes that cause a lot of damage and a lot of death, all the way into central Iran, to Tehran, the capital. From So from here, we're on the western edge of this vague zone of deformation, which goes all the way over to Tehran because of these big plates kind of pushing up against each other. Now, to end uh, this little rant here from Mount Vesuvius, freaking awesome. Uh, how is this important in today's world? Is this just a historical podcast? Well, yeah and no. Uh, what you see here that we pan back and forth of uh, during this podcast is look at all the cities. You can't see them all, but all the habitation, all the houses, the apartment complexes. We are in what is the most dangerous volcanic zone on planet Earth. Not because it's getting ready to blow its top any second. It might. It might happen today. It might happen 20 years from now. It might happen 100 years from now. This is the most dangerous zone of volcanism on planet Earth because, and again, you can't see it because the clouds are rolling in, but of everything you've seen, we're looking at the most densely populated area of an active volcano on planet Earth. Right here on the coast, on the, uh, Naples, and Nepali coast from Naples all the way to Sorrento, somewhere in between one and a half to three million people all reside on the flanks of an active volcano, right? So, <laughs> cute ladies are awesome. So, this is today's world. Uh, this is an active volcano. It will do something again. And there are two to three million people and a hell ton of tourists who will be here when something happens. So we have a nice human, physical, human, environmental zone of interaction that plays into a bigger idea on planet Earth of why do humans live in areas where we know natural disasters occur? We know Mount Vesuvius is active. We know this. We know it's going to erupt again. Why will people stay here? Because it's beautiful. Because it's the Italian coast. Because it's a great climate. Because it's a great place to live. And they're willing to bank on, it won't happen in my lifetime. <laughs> Yes, it's going to erupt again, but it's not going to happen in our lifetime. You know who else thought that? And here, truly, we're going to end this. Pompeii is behind me. The people of Pompeii, 2,000 years ago, thought it's not going to happen in our lifetime. Volcanoes like this one very often give you signs. They start rumbling. Earthquakes will happen 5, 10, even 20 years in advance. But people think, ah, well, my lifetime's only 20 or 30 or 40 years longer than where I'm at right now. I'll stick it out, it'll be okay. You know who else thought, and obviously that was a bad bet on their part. You know who else thought, ah, this volcano doesn't erupt that often, it's no big deal. Of the United States, who had an Air Force base just behind this, these clouds in 1944. Uh, remember, Italy uh, was part of the, uh, uh, the bad guys, the fascist team during World War II. So Italy and Germany were allied and Italy was the first to go, the first to fall before we finally conquered Nazi Germany. And so the Americans with their allies, the UKs and the French, actually came in from Sicily and came in south right here and started moving northward up the uh, Italian peninsula to liberate the peninsula from the fascist uh, 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 Italian uh, Mussolini and then on into continental Europe. However, we, we, the Americans, as we started to liberate southern Italy, started an Air Force base just over here in Pompeii. An Air Force base. So that was like 1943, the US invades from the south, Mussolini flees north and his fascist regime flees north and we started an Air Force base. And the last time Mount Vesuvius erupted was actually 1944, during which there was a US air base right over there. Again, the clouds are whipping behind us so you can't see it. And actually all of the planes on the ground, none of them were in the air, over 60 US aircraft were destroyed from the, the gaseous, uh, 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 the pumice, the blast, uh, mostly ash that fell on all of the planes and destroyed them. And that was in 1944. 
that's just like 60 or so years ago. So this is a quite active place, uh, uh, quite tectonically, a volcanically active place. And it shows the human physical interaction zone that millions of humans are in all across planet Earth that could at any given time be the next natural disaster. So to finish up, we're in Italy, 4,203 feet. Mount Vesuvius, a place everybody's heard about, but you simply must come because it's super awesome cool. Party on.